This isn't the easiest way to reinstall Windows, but if Windows isn't booting at all, or if you've tried other methods to reinstall Windows and they're just not working at all, then you might need to do a fresh install of Windows. So today we'll talk about how you can make an ISO, or make a bootable flash drive using an ISO on a flash drive so you can uh, get a fresh install of Windows. You can also get a fresh reinstall Windows if you just have a Windows uh, disk. So like I bought Windows because I made my computer, so I got a Windows disk with it. But a lot of you people like that have like a Dell, for example, or something like that, you probably don't have uh, either you know the disk or if your computer doesn't have a disk drive, you can't do this either. But if you do have that, you can use it. If you don't, then you just get a flash drive. That's all you need, and a little bit of a little bit of work on your part to make it a bootable flash drive. Uh, it's kind of tricky, but that's why I'm making this video to make it a little bit easier for you guys. So let's get into it. Oh, and by the way, that flash drive needs to be at least four gigabytes. It can be more than that, but don't make it any less because it might not work. So yeah, go ahead and plug that in, and I'll open up my computer. As you can kind of see right now, it is already a bootable flash drive. I'm going to go ahead and format it, see if it's bootable, it'll look like this. It'll have that Windows icon, and then you can also click on it to install Windows through Windows, but I prefer to install Windows a different way. If you're actually lo looking for the installation of Windows past the bootable drive, I'll have a, a video later on in the future, so watch out for that. So if there's stuff already on your flash drive, just go ahead and format it. It's kind of the easiest thing to start off with. So just right click on it and then click format. And you really don't need to mess with too much. You can make it NTFS. It really doesn't really matter a whole lot. NTFS is only gonna work on Windows, but it's gonna be a Windows bootable flash drive. So it doesn't really matter, I guess, right? So yeah, we'll just go ahead and format that really quick and it'll be done in just a second. And then we can work on uh, making a new ISO uh, or make a new bootable flash drive with an ISO file. So guys, bear with me for a little bit in this video. Here's how you get an ISO file. It's a little bit tricky, so sorry about this in advance. It's, I mean, trust me, me doing it myself is just fine. I oh, mean, God, it's terrible. That's why I'm making this video because I do this all the time. And every time I make a bootable flash drive, it's such a pain in the butt. So Microsoft actually lets you download ISOs on their website kind of they really don't to be honest but i'm showing this because microsoft is dumb and i hate the way they do this so if you go to this url you can see it right there then you can go ahead and download uh, windows 7 is what we're doing today but they also have isos for other um, other operating systems as well i'm pretty sure so like you go to this page you can put your product key in there and they'll give you an iso right um no so you have to have like a you can't have like if you have windows installed like from a dell or like my copy of windows that i bought on amazon does not work you have to have one that's like bought directly from microsoft or something like it's really so stupid don't even don't even bother with this crap because it's not going to work it'd be great if you could download this directly through microsoft but you really can't which is stupid so a good workaround for this is there's different websites that you can download ISOs from. So on this website, I'm pretty sure you could download them from, uh, from this Softpedia and you can download it from like BitTorrent websites and stuff like that. If you just Google Windows 7 ISO files and you look forever, you might actually find it, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to be honest with you. But if you need like certain copies of Windows and stuff like that, sometimes it's the only way to find like 32-bit professional Windows 7 or something like that. So it's tricky to find that stuff, but there are websites out there. Techverse has some links here. You can go to this uh, mirror right here, that digital river. Uh, and you can download it through BitTorrents. I don't really like that too much just because I always feel like I'm always, I'm always gonna get a virus. I never have whenever I have done those methods, but there's an easier method which we're gonna go to right now. So this website right here, uh, hidoc.net or whatever I guess it's called, go ahead and download this. Where's the actual download link? This one right here. So click on this one. Don't click on the, the Star Wars ad down here or something. <laughs> just click on the download right there. And then we'll go back to our desktop and it's right here. So once you download that, of course, then you just open it and you can choose whatever software you want. We're going to pick Windows 7 right there. We can choose which editions we want. And actually, yeah, with Windows 7, you can download many different ones. Uh, I just have Home Premium. That's what most people have. But if you need Starter, Home Basic, whatever, 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 look at all these like different versions. It's crazy. But it's nice. They also have the Service Pack 1, which is pretty good. So yeah, you can click on that, confirm that. Then you can click on the language. So I'm going to pick English because that's what I'm speaking, as you guys can probably tell. And then you can pick the 32 or the 64-bit, and you just download it. 
I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to download it again, but literally you just click this button and it downloads. Once you do that, you have the ISO file on your, probably in your downloads folder, and we'll move on from that process. Oh, and by the way, before I go any farther, actually, you can pick other versions of Windows, like you can see right here, Windows 8.1, Windows 10. This, is, this program is just a really easy way to download Windows ISO files um, without having to use BitTorrents and all that crazy stuff. So I went ahead and moved my ISO file to the desktop right here, but as you can see, it says ISO, so very cool stuff. So uh, well, after you get the ISO file, you need a program to make it from ISO to a bootable flash drive. So you can, the, the, this is the one I use right here, it's called ISO to USB. We can go ahead and find it by just Googling ISO to USB. It's a pretty good program. It's like free, which is great, of course, and uh, I've never had any issues with it. I've used it plenty. So you just download it right here. It's a free program and it works great. And uh, that's what I kind of prefer. So once you download that program, all you do is you open it. Of course, click yes on that. And then we have ISO to USB right here. We pick the ISO file, which is currently on our desktop. So I need to find that right down there. And then you refresh your drives. You pick the white one you got. So mine is the N drive right here. If you're not sure which drive it is, remember to go to PC and look for the flash drive that it is. And it has the N, that's the uh, drive letter for that one. So we'll pick the N drive. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna make an NTFS. Um, that, make, that usually works a little bit better on Windows in my experience. So that's what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and name it uh, Windows 7, well, yeah, I'm just gonna name it Windows 7. Of course, click bootable, and then just click burn, click yes on that, and then it'll take maybe like a few minutes and you'll have a bootable flash drive. And there we go, it's making a bootable flash drive. Sometimes it tells me that it's not working or whatever. If it ever tells you that, just make sure that all the settings didn't like revert back to something. So like whenever I, tr whenever on the, f the file system, sometimes like it'll revert back to FAT32 on my computer. Turn, make, make sure it's back to NTFS and uh, then try it again and it should work. It works for me right now, so I don't really have any reason why it wouldn't work for you guys. And I've tried it already twice or three times. Actually, I've done this many, many times. So hopefully that's working for you guys. And if you have any questions about it, leave that in the comment section below. And there we go. The bootable flash drive is created. So yeah, very nice stuff. We can go ahead and look at it. Uh, it's, as you can see on the file viewer, it's coming up as a bootable drive now. So you can actually like go through the setup through Windows if Windows is still booting. Um, but I really prefer to not do that. What I prefer is I prefer to um, reboot the computer and boot to the flash drive instead of your like actual hard drive that's in your computer. And then it'll go through all the setup and everything to reinstall Windows. If you don't know how to do this, I'll make a video on it probably a few days after this video comes out. Um, it's a really easy process, but if you don't know anything about computers then you probably don't know how to do it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comment section below. Making a bootable drive is honestly really confusing. So if you guys have any questions, I'll do my best to help you. Um, even I have trouble sometimes, but uh, thank you guys for watching this video and hopefully it was helpful. And uh, if you guys want to subscribe to the channel for more how-to videos, do that. But beyond that, you guys have a great day and I'll see you later. Peace out.